Ezekiel chapter 41. Again, the disclaimer, I don't know all the Bible. I'm going to read. This is future. This temple will be the temple of the millennium. And by key points, we can see what is going to happen in the millennium. And he brought me to the temple. The temple has been destroyed by now in Ezekiel's time. He measured the pole six cubits broad on one side, six cubits broad on the other side, which was the breadth of the tabernacle. The breadth of the door was ten cubits. And the sides of the door were five cubits on one side, five cubits on the other side, and he measured the length thereof, forty cubits, and the breadth, twenty cubits. Then went, then went he inward and measured the post of the door, two cubits, and the door six cubits, and the breadth of the door seven cubits. So he measured the length thereof, the twenty cubits, the breadth twenty cubits, before the temple, and he said unto me, This is the most holy place, the oracle. That's where the mercy seat. That's where the cherubims would be. That's where God's presence would be, except there was God's presence is on the throne of David. Jesus Christ. But there's still a most holy place. After he measured the wall of the house, six cubits, and we'll be, I mean, there's a few more chapters we'll be reading about this temple, but we do have the most holy place oracle. After he measured the wall of the house, six cubits, in the breadth every side cubic, four cubits, round about the house on every side. And the side chambers were three little rooms, one over another, so there's two floors, 30 in order. So there are right, there are three chambers. One over another, so it's three stories. First, second, third. And there are ten in a row. Ten times three is thirty. And they entered into the wall, which was the house for the side chambers round about, that they might have hold. But they had not hold in the wall of the house. And the hold is some kind of fastening. So I could say about that. And there was an enlarging, making big, and a winding about still upward to the side chambers. And the one winding about the house went still upward round about the house. Therefore, the breadth of the house was still upward, going up, and so increased from lowest chamber to the highest in the midst. And I'm not going to say a staircase, but I'm going to say a ramp. I saw also, and I could be wrong. I saw also the height of the house round about. The foundation of the side chamber was a full reed of six great cubits. So a reed is six great cubits. Not six cubits. Six great cubits to the maximum that a cubit will be. Again, the cubit varied. Depending who the ruler was. The thickness of the wall, which which was the side chamber without, was five cubits. That which was left was placed on the side chambers, rooms on the side that were within. This temple in the millennium is surrounded by buildings and it would be storage they would be offices for the priest there would be places for gold there'd be places places for wheat there'd be the places for the instruments there's a lot of activity going on in this temple and between the chambers was a wideness of 20 cubits like a little hallway 
about the house on every side. And the doors of the side chamber were toward the place that was left. I don't know. Was door toward the north. That's north. Another door towards the north, south. And the breadth of the place that was left was five cubics round about. Now the building that was before the separate place at the end toward the west was 70 cubics broad and the wall of the building was 5 cubics thick. That's a thick wall. If I think the thickness of the and the length was 90 cubics. So he measured the house 100 cubics long and the separate place that would be the oracle the, and the building within the walls were 100 cubics long. Also the breadth of the face of the house and the separate place toward the east, a hundred cubits. And he measured the length of the building over against the separate place which was behind it. And the galleys, these are large rooms, having one, having on the one side and on the other side, a hundred cubits with the inner temple inside and the porch of the court that's outside. But we also read the other night that there's an inner porch. The doorposts and the narrow windows and the narrow windows, you, you've seen them. A lot of the old churches had those narrow windows and castles. And the galleries round about on their three stories. You just read about those three stories. Over against the door, sealed, ceiling, with wood round about, and from the ground up to the windows, and the windows were covered. To that above the door, even unto the inner house without, and by all the wall about within and without by measure. See this within and without, I don't know at all. And it was made with cherubims and palm trees. And so that the palm tree was between a cherub and a cherub. And every chariot had two faces. Now, what we're looking at here is, can I say a holy wallpaper? It etched in the walls. You say, well, what's the difference between that and an image or an idol? These were not made to be worshipped. Now let me give you, an, I said wallpaper, let me give you an example of wallpaper that would be idolatized. you got your child, and he has a favorite cartoon character. And you wallpaper his house, uh, his room, and his bedspread, and his pills, and pictures of that cartoon character, most likely, he's going to idolatize that cartoon character. That's idolatry. Now, if you go, I, I, I don't, I think only the priest's going to be loud, but they're in there. Oh, wow. Okay, palm trees and cherubim. A lot of them. Okay, let's go about the Lord's business. You know, you can go to an, an art museum, and we, we got one here in Daytona. You can go and look at the paintings, and if you're an artist, you can pick up certain skills. And like, if you don't idolatize them, like, you know, hey, if I got that painting, I'll have a full collection. Or look how much money if I had the Mona Lisa. Or I would find a missing Mona Lisa when she got off the chair. All right, when you put your value on that, when, you know, those little beanbag toys. I'm going to get one for my child. He's going to play with it. He's going to get dirty. May even break open. Oh, okay, who cares? All right, you know, just get him another one. But when you get those 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 beanbag, you know, one day they're going to be worth a lot of money. That's idolatry. And what this temple is to do, it's a decoration. I don't know why the palm tree. But the cherubims, they're, they're in heaven. And I'm not going to say there's palm trees in heaven. 
quite frankly, living in Florida, I've seen enough palm trees. I mean, when I first moved down to Florida, when we first came down to Florida in 2010, in October, okay, wow, cool, palm trees. I've seen palm trees before. Uh, what, 10 years later, 11 years later, it's like, you see people, you see a palm tree going down on a trailer, you know, they're going to go in someone's yard, like, you couldn't find another tree? Another palm, you are going to plant a palm tree? <laughs> By the way, the palm trees, and when you look at something like Gilligan's Island, they don't stay like that on Gilligan's Island. When they get old and don't get manicured and, and trimmed, they get ugly. So I didn't cost you nothing. So, so that the face of a man, <clears throat> Ezekiel in Revelation, was toward a palm tree on one side, and the face of a young lion toward the palm on the other side. Now, there's no eagle, and there's no calf or cherub. From the description we got, there's an eagle, and then we got a cherub, and then we got a, a calf, which is one and the same. They're not here. The great bald eagle symbol of America and Nazi Germany. That's quite interesting, isn't it? We got the same symbol. You know, the, 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 the U.S. Coast Guard eagle... Ship, that was out of Hitler's yacht. We captured it from out of Hitler. And when you look on the front of that eagle, there's an eagle, golden eagle. What you don't know is that eagle held a swastika. And they just cut off the swastika. That's, that's extra too. That didn't cost you nothing. But the eagle and the calf or the cherub is not there. And all through life, while the devil is locked up for a thousand years, the devil has been called the lion, our adversary. And now you have the cherubim representing man on one side and the lion on the other side. And that lion is the tribe of Judah, Jesus Christ. That man and that lion is the humanity of Jesus Christ and the God of Jesus Christ. Because the lion is the king of the beast. And they say, you know, the lion is not afraid of anything. I've seen pictures where lions ran from a herd of elephants. If I had a herd of elephants running after me, I'd be running too. So, and the face of a young lion toward the palm on the other side, it was made through all the house round about. So this typical wall paper, maybe etched in the walls, is all around. From the ground onto above the door, every cherubim and palm trees made and on the wall of the temple. The posts of the temples were squared. So not round. Square. And the face of the sanctuary, the appearance of the one as the appearance of the other, the temp the, the popes. They're both square. <clears throat> the altar and Solomon had cherubim. But we we have not seen that Solomon did. We're not seeing that this stuff was overlaid with gold. Everything Solomon had, you know, to touch King Midas, everything he touched turned to gold. That is a perverted uh, uh, mythology of the story of Solomon. Because everything that went into Solomon's temple was turned to gold. The altar of wood was three cubits high, and the length thereof two cubits. And the corners thereof, and the length thereof, and the walls thereof were of wood. And he said unto me, This is the table 
that is before the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Wait a minute. Is it an altar or is it a table? It's one and the same. This was not in Moses' tabernacle. This was not in Solomon's temple. This was not in Ezra and Nehemiah's temple. There is an altar that is a table before the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we take part of the Lord's Supper, we are to be reminded of the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ and that he is coming again. That altar and that table that stands before Jesus Christ is a reminder that he suffered and died that last supper, that last night he spent with the disciples. He suffered and died, was buried and rose again, and he has come. He has come. And it makes you wonder, now, I don't know, I'm not Michelangelo, I don't think everybody, you know, that... Okay, but wouldn't it be th funny if, uh, let me use the modern term, wouldn't it be interesting if there was a renewal, re I don't know how to say it, that the Lord would call the 12 disciples, and maybe including Paul, all right, let's have, a, let's partake of the Lord's Supper as we did the night I died. Let's go back to the day when it all happened. Let's show all the Christians. Let's show all the Jewish people. Let's show the nations. Let's remember the night that we had all the way up to my resurrection. That'd be interesting. Would it not be interesting if the Bible is played out by some kind of... And Noah will play Noah as he will show us his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, because they were blessed by God, how they built the ark, and the people in Tennessee will take a flying leap into fantasy land. I just got finished reading the three chapters about the How on earth can you build the ark with the information given? How much did Noah charge the people if anybody were going into that ark? And how much will they charge you to go in and out of that ark? And don't forget, as I've been told, I don't care, I don't want to know. Some kind of amusement park or petting zoo. Woohoo! Wouldn't it be great if, if the life of Peter, okay, Peter, this, no be no day, but this time, and there'll be no time in the future, no date and time. All right, explain to everybody everything that happened to you and that which is not written in the Bible about you. It's all yours. The floor is yours. Paul, Peter's done. Well, you you got the floor. Tell everybody everything that happened to you. We got all eternity. Take your time. Eutychus will be sitting in the front row. You don't have to worry about him dying. And some people don't even know what I what that meant. And there'll be nobody that will hate you, Paul. And we all will listen and enjoy your messages. Why don't you tell them the lies that people taught about you and then tell us what the truth was? Then we'll give time to Adam and Eve. Hmm? That'd be interesting. And the temple of the sanctuary had two doors. And the doors were two leaves of peace. So that's it's one doorway there's a door to the right and there's a door to the left. The leaves would be two doors. Two turning leaves, two leaves for the one door and two leaves for the other door. So it's a French door. You ever seen those doors? There's a door and the door is split in half. You can open the top and, and the cartoon carrier runs into the bottom or you can Close, uh, open the bottom, leave the top open, and the cartoon carriage smacks into the top one. That's what that door is. You saw them in a lot of older houses that would go into the kitchen. You see them in some restaurant. You got that 
bottom doors open. It's got like a little tray that you can pick up, you know, whatever you order. They're fr they're called French stores. That I can show you. And they were made on them. The doors of the temple. Cherubims and palm There's those palm trees again. Like as were made upon the walls. And they were thick planks upon the face of the porch without. No gold. And there were narrow windows in palm trees on one side and on the other side. So here's a window. In the middle of the window, there's a palm tree on both sides. And the sides of the porch and upon the chambers of the house and thick planks. And the Holy Spirit was saying, Ezekiel, yeah, write thick planks. Okay, thick planks. What are they? They're thick planks. We are given so much. This is what, the third, third chapter of the temple? We got more to come? We're given more detail about the future temple, I'm going to say it, than we are given about the birth of Jesus Christ. And every year the Baptist Catholics celebrate the birthday of Jesus on Tammuz's birthday. And how many Baptists know about the temple they're going to see in the future? More in there about the temple. You got Moses' tabernacle. You got Solomon's temple. You got Ezekiel's temple coming up in the millennium. And you got Ezra's temple. And you got Herod's temple of Jesus Christ. And one chapter, if you want to say one chapter, about the birth of Jesus. You got one time the Bible mentions the word Easter as a Roman pagan holiday, followed by the word Passover. And your Baptist Catholics know more about Easter, which is wrong, and they know more about Christmas, which is wrong, pagan. They don't know about the temple, and they don't know about the Jewish feast, which we'll see later on in Ezekiel. The Jewish feasts are coming back, not Easter, not Christmas. I'm telling you right now, you Baptist Catholics, you're going to stand before a holy and righteous God. You'll be found guilty. You'll get wood, as in your yule, your yule log, hay, as in your major scene, and stubble, worthless, will burn up for what you worship. That didn't cost you nothing either. 